All right. All right. All right. Let's get the party started. How's everybody doing? I hope you all are well. Thank you for being here on this beautiful Tuesday night. It is September 20th, Tuesday, uh, depending on where you're at in this big, beautiful world. Uh, Sally Mae's in the house already. Sally Mae says, is this members only? No, this is not members only. It is subscribers as well. Uh, I want to thank you for being here. Rudy Munoz is in the house. Sally Mae says that, uh, Sally Mae says, I used to work in the hospital. Um, not sure which hospital you're talking about, but we'll find out. Uh, love this is in the house saying hello, everyone. Hello, love this. I uh, want to thank everybody for being here. We are on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook. Uh, we are on YouTube Live. Uh, revisiting a story from a while back. Uh, we covered this about a year ago, maybe a little bit over a year ago, uh, about Billy Hart, a uh, young man, young guy out of uh, East Liverpool, Ohio. Uh, kind of a bizarre situation. He was, uh, at a, he was, he was taken into police custody. Uh, he was last seen on November 22nd, 2021 and police took him into custody. He was taken to a hospital where, uh, he was basically left unattended. He, uh, left the hospital and, uh, like a foot chase or they chased him down the road. From what I understand, he crossed the highway ran down into possibly some bushes, possibly into the Ohio River. We don't know exactly what may or may not have happened to him, but at a very uh, bizarre circumstances. And uh, we'll have uh, his sister, Melissa, on with us in just a moment. Uh, and also in this same area of East Liverpool, Ohio, where this all happened, uh, we will talk about another story uh, with this young uh, this man by the name of Michael Keith Lake Jr. When we have his sister uh, backstage, uh, Megan, and uh, we'll bring her on to talk about her brother. Uh, another bizarre uh, circumstance. I'll, I'll let her explain that. But uh, we're trying to figure out because there's some mysterious uh, or possibly coincidental uh, circumstances between both of these cases. And is it just a sheer accident is it coincidental is it a police cover-up we're going to talk about that uh we'll get your thoughts and opinions on that as well um so let's go ahead and we'll bring up here we're going to bring, bring some of our guests from the backstage we got megan leak in the hello megan leak welcome to the all-american dream chaser uh patina hello. williams we'd like to welcome you as well uh we're going to bring in lee ellen i believe it's lee ellen Lee, Lee Allen, 1147 or 11471. Uh, we have Patty Watkins. Uh, we'll just bring the panel up and we'll, we're going to uh, have an open discussion about uh, what exactly is happening in East Liverpool, Ohio, regarding both of these men. Uh, so I think we're getting a little bit of feedback from is it Patty or something? I'm not sure where again, somebody's if you got a TV or something turned up. We can just turn it down a little bit. Um, Gigi Delgaff's in our uh, Facebook group saying, hey, Tony, hey, Megan, hello, Gigi, in our Facebook group. Uh, we got Sally May, says East Liverpool City Hospital. Police, uh, Sally, Sally May is saying she may have worked there, I believe. Uh, so, okay, I uh, want to welcome everybody. Uh, the, Melissa is going to join us tonight. Uh, we'll see if we can get her in here. Um, so, okay, Megan, your, 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 uh, brother, uh, is, uh, Michael, correct? Correct. Uh, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you begin telling your, your story about your brother, Michael, and exactly I don't know if it'll, what happened I don't with Michael and, uh, on there. Yeah, uh okay. okay, so. I'll have you explain what happened to your brother, Michael, and the, the coincidences between you no, and Melissa, oh, how, you, how you and Melissa actually knew each other. Uh, there's some oh, kind of eerily con coincidental circumstances, I guess, this, uh, so to speak. Very bizarre situation in East Liverpool, Ohio. And uh, it makes you wonder, was this a police cover-up? 
but I'll let you explain it. So go ahead, uh, Megan. I'll let you go ahead and take the take the stage. We'll okay. Well, first, my first, my aunt said that she can't hear it. Okay, I think we're getting a little bit of feedback or some noise. Uh, somebody got some noise in the background. That might be a problem. Who's your Who's your aunt? Uh, my aunt. She's in, she's watching it. Her name's Julie. Okay. Um, not sure why she cannot hear, but we'll keep working yeah. with it. And um, we do have a little bit of noise. You guys turn the TVs down or radios down. It says uh, somebody has a uh, some background noise, or maybe it's a kid back there. Some noise. Um, that might be the problem. Okay, I think it was Patty. It's better now. Okay, okay, we're good now. Um, okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, so. Megan. I know Melissa because I knew her brother. Her brother, William, and my brother were actually friends. Wow. They had been friends since I was 17 and I'm 33. Okay. Very interesting. Very yes. so these two guys, so these two guys were friends. Uh okay. Um we got Lee Ellen 11471 in the back backstage. We'll bring her back on. Okay. Let's see if that'll work. We can bring her back on. Trying to bring everybody in to talk about what's going on with this. Okay, continue on. I'm sorry, Megan. So they were friends. They knew each other. Uh, okay, I'll let you take it from there. For multiple years, they did. They knew each other. Um, my brother passed away May 20th, 2021. And uh, it was ruled a suicide. But I mean, I don't know if I remember how to share these. That's but I okay. do have, I do have the messages uh, that state that it wasn't a suicide. I've tried to take all sixty-four of the pictures of the messages I do have to the police. They do not want them. They told me to take them to the coroner's office, but the coroner's office are not the ones that investigate the police should be investigating it and it's just it's really coincidental that that all happened in may and on may 20th they also found another kid prior to finding my brother that was shot and killed in east liverpool ohio his name was dion and i feel for his family and not even a month after my brother and this kid ended up dead another young child well young adult he was 18 he ended up dead and you fast forward to november and now we're at the billy hart situation where he's missing yeah and billy i think he's been uh, welcome melissa you melissa we had you on it was about a year ago melissa and it's been about nine ten months yeah yeah almost a year now and then still no no sign of your brother no news on your brother billy uh william <laughs> Nope. Uh, uh, this is a picture here of uh, uh, William. Also, I believe goes by Billy Hart. William Hart. Billy Hart. We had him on about nine. We had his sister on here with us about nine months ago, almost a year now. Um, so yeah, uh, we have his sister on stage on the panel with us, Melissa, and we have Megan with us, Megan Leak. Um, both are both uh, very peculiar uh, incidents. Um, I'll I'll let you can continue on, Megan. I'm uh really kind of baffled by the way the the law enforcement has handled this, and I'm sorry that you all are going through this. Um, I uh, I hope we can get some answers, but I'll, I'll but we're here to, here to discuss it and see what we can maybe learn or where we can go from here. Get this uh story out there. I'm actually um, going to see if I can share these pictures. Okay, know. yeah, uh, just use the share down there and you can uh, bring them on and we'll put them up here for everyone to see. Uh, I want uh, Please hit that like, subscribe, and share these uh, videos. We have Melissa Michael, uh, Patty Watkins is on the panel, and Patina Williams, uh, and Lee Ellen. Uh, I'm not sure if Lee Ellen can hear us. I um, want to thank everybody for being with us, uh, being on the panel. Uh, Patty Watkins and Patina Williams, are they with you, Melissa? Or do you know them? Or I'm not sure who Patty Watkins is, but Patina is a family friend. Okay, but uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Patty Watkins, are you with uh, Megan? Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> oh, okay, I, I figure it's a, a, a lot of family members on this panel today. Um, so uh, continuing on here, uh, well, uh, while uh, Megan's trying to load up these these pictures or whatever, uh, Melissa, uh, well, hold on a minute. I, they just popped in here. Here we go. Okay, we got them. So we'll bring those up. We got uh, oh, we got, see. Okay, somebody else is just joining the panel. Amber McElroy. Hello, That's Amber. Okay. okay, so we have okay. the we have the. There it is. The okay, I think you're they're trying to show a screenshot or something like that appears. Okay, we, we got the. Okay, we, we got um, the. What is it you're showing to us, Megan? Showing to us, Megan. Okay, we're probably having a little difficulty trying to show that. Um, okay, we'll continue along. Uh, a little bit of technical difficulties, probably she bounced out, but we'll bring her back on. I think she accidentally knocked herself out of the out of the group, but she'll be back. We'll bring her back. Um, so, Melissa, uh, what do you have to say? Anything new? Any developments at all? Uh, um, a couple months ago, he was. Um, someone got a hold of me saying that he looked like someone that she fed down in Barbersville at a KFC. Um, the cops from down there went and took a statement from them, but it was nothing was confirmed. Um, and then recently, a family friend said that she thought she'd seen him in Weirton, which I went and checked out, talked to businesses down there as well. Never got any confirmation if it was him. I don't think it was. Um, the cops were notified. I don't know if they did. I, I don't know if they did anything. That would be the cop in Hancock County if they went down and check, checked it out. They said he was going to, but I'm not sure. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's going on, what, two years now, right? Uh... No, no, it's been 10 months. November will be a year. Okay. Okay. I live in a magical house. Uh, yeah, Forty-three weeks. Okay, and uh, still no news. Uh, Amber, are you there? I, I think she, Amber had a. We need Amber to turn the TV. I didn't have on. any questions. I was just listening. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so we have two, uh, and Megan, you and Melissa know each other. I mean, uh, I know we talked the other night on the phone. Any uh, recollections of each other? Or? Um, I don't remember her. I'm sorry, <laughs> but her brother does. Look, her brother does look very familiar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Megan claims to have date. Well, I'll let Megan explain it. Go ahead, Megan. Uh, I used to date Billy when I was 15. Well, I'm sorry that I don't remember. <laughs> it was no. Um, <laughs> that was a long time ago. Your brother does look very familiar to me, though. I know I've seen him before. They they always hung out at the teen club together. Okay. Wow. Uh, East Liverpool is a... Uh, very small town. Yeah, or everybody knows everybody, and it has a share of problems. And um, uh, both of you have really sad stories. I mean, it's really hard to... Uh, figure out exactly what happened it sounds like drugs may have been involved in and possibly both and both uh situations it sounds like yeah that, no i've never denied that people right. a lot ask that when they see his post wasn't he in the drugs yeah. well you know what yeah he had a problem right. but that does not mean that he's not worth he's a human being like he's still right. you know he's still important to a lot of exactly. people exactly exactly we have a family that misses him terribly yeah what it seems like they just pushed him away like pushed the whole case to the side because drugs were involved I, I don't know if that's really what happened but that's how it seems to me 
So uh, sometimes I think that is the case. Sadly, I think sometimes police uh, law enforcement tend to favor the upper class neighborhoods and they seem to get the top tier of protection and everyone else kind of, you know, gets what's the left, I guess. But, but no, I, I understand where you're coming from. And I still believe that uh, the value of your brother's life should be no different than, you know, the president of the United States. I, in my opinion, I, you know, uh, a life is a life and life should be valued no matter what. Uh, a lot of people do have substance abuse problems. A lot of people, you know, it's an addiction. Doesn't mean that he's a bad person. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this whole situation wouldn't have happened if St. Clair Township would have just stayed with him at the hospital. They didn't do their job. Um, with, with the, the story with, with Billy, uh, with, with William, um, let me see. I, I, I want to pull up, for those of you that are just joining us, uh, talking about what happened over in, this would have been uh, East Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm going to try to try to zoom in on it. Uh, now, Billy was in this hospital over here, right? The, uh, the uh, right. hospital, I believe. Right? Okay. Yeah. So he was in the. Taken there by the St. Clair Township police because they okay. said he swallowed something. They had him okay. handcuffed to the bed. And at the end of their body cam footage, it just says, uh, we're not sitting here with you tonight. We don't feel like sitting here with you. So we're going to, um, we're leaving. And if you choose to run, it'll be a felony escape. Oh, wow. That was what they said to him. <laughs> and then they took the handcuffs off and they left. Okay. See if I can, uh, zoom in. So it was this hospital here. I believe it was, I'm not for certain. I remember we covered this before. It was one of these yes. hospitals, right? Hospital. Yeah. And then he, he, uh, he leaves the hospital and he takes off on foot and he, didn't he run down a, like a residential street? Maybe it was this one. They don't really know what street, but there is a yeah. down by the river. There's going to be an, there's an exit that goes into East Liverpool, right? Like off of this, off of that highway, that's where they seen him. And then they chased him, this East Liverpool cops chased him down by see those barges right by the river there right down yeah. that area is where they were chasing him so yeah. down down somewhere in this area right now you, you, okay now and when i when I, i'm sorry go ahead they were chasing him down there and uh about 35 minutes into the video the cop that was the only cop that had his body cam on um officer lane um, looked at the water and said, holy shit. Um, I sent emails to the chief asking about that. I finally got a hold of him. He never answered my emails. And he said, oh, well, yeah, I, I do recall. Or I don't. He said he don't recall saying that. But if he did, it was probably because a rock fell off the bridge and startled him. There's no rocks on the bridge. Are you talking about the, the bridge for the Ohio River? Yeah, the Noel Bridge. The the new the new bridge. It's or Newell Bridge. Okay. So, that was, okay. Yep, that's a metal bridge. Wow. So, um, yeah. So they think he might have gone up around this area, up around the bridge, possibly. I don't. That area. I don't know if you, went. you did with your little um, cursor. That's the area that they were chasing him like all through that okay. um so 35 yeah. minutes that was when the, the guy said you know holy shit and then as soon as he said it he turned around and walked back back out of the um bushes like up the hill and that was the end of the video it turned off so he was worth 39 minutes of their time and they called it um. off another officer was there um, I can't remember his name, but he offered to go up onto the bridge and highlight, uh, spotlight the area. That was Flady, Melissa. Flady, that's it. And um, Officer Lane said negative. He didn't want him to do that. No boats wow. were called out. 
no canines were brought in. That's what he was worth. 39 minutes of their time. Uh, was it nine months ago when I spoke to the uh, captain of the police department over in East Liverpool? Mm-hmm. And I questioned him. And, you know, he was, he was a, very nice, very cordial. Uh, and I asked him about this. And he said that, you know, because I asked him, I said, well, you know, if you were, we just want to find, we just want to find him. I just said, we just want to find Billy. And, and, you know, uh, what do you think? I, you remember I was, I was speculating, well, maybe he jumped on a train because the railroad tracks right there, possibly, you know, he might've hopped the train. I didn't, you know, right. But the captain's uh, response to me was when I questioned him, he just said, if he went into that river, it's not because of something we did. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That was Jay Lane's dad. Yeah, the, yeah, the chief of police. And that's the officer that was chasing him. That's his father. Okay. Um, yeah, because he he told me they called off the search, and uh, okay, well, very uh, very concerning. That I don't know how how deep that river is or how cold that water was, but I don't uh, or what. Call off a search for someone. I understand um, he escaped. He left the hospital. Whatever, however you want to put it. But they knew he was at risk for overdosing. They knew he swallowed something, and they still chose to just 39 minutes. That's it, just makes me sick. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's horrific, and I can't imagine how all of you must feel. Um, and there were six officers down there at that river, and only one had a body cam on. That just doesn't even make sense. Wow. Um, for those of you that are just joining in, we're talking about uh, Billy Hart, Will, uh, Billy or William Hart. Uh, uh, he went missing back on November twenty. Was it you know, November twenty second? Wasn't it twenty second? Twenty yeah, twenty twenty one. Okay, November twenty second of two thousand twenty one. Okay. Uh, so he went missing, and uh, it for it appears that he's in that river, from what we can still tell. I mean, I mean, what are your thoughts on all this? You think he's in that river? Or, uh, I mean, it's a tragic situation, but um, I don't think that my brother is alive. Honestly, um, I still keep looking for him because we haven't found anything yet. And I will continue to look for him until we have something, something. I don't care what I have to do, but I don't feel like he would do this to his family. Not this long. I really yeah. don't. Um, it's a, it's a sad situation. And I remember asking the, the chief or the captain, I, I asked him about, you know, um, searching for Billy in that river. Um, he's, he seemed a little bit, I don't know, maybe a little irritated about the idea of having to drag the river. He says, he just, he just made a comment like, oh, great. This is all we need. You know, the attack thing, he, he was referring to the attention on that's, YouTube. And, that's the job. That's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Like as soon as he ran towards that river, immediately they should have had the boats out i mean that's just yeah. i mean precautionary even if it was to help find him you know they could shine lights up their way like they did not utilize their resources in any way to find him not at all they did not care plain and simple um yeah now to bring you to the temperatures of our water during that period of time a month prior, we had chaos divers in our area, and they found Charles Blue Hardy raised the um, beginning mouth of Yellow Creek. Jacob had got a tear in his suit and got water in there, and he started getting hypothermia then. So you know the temperature of our water was bad. It was yeah. cold. I remember the officer, uh, the captain, or whoever he was that I had spoken with, he did say that, um, 
Let me see. We got a William, William Williams trying to get in here. Uh, you got to connect your camera and your microphone, William Williams. Uh, uh, the the officer stated that when I th- I think when we when we cover this is like in the winter time, and he said right now you know the it'd be, it, water was frozen or whatever, and he did say that probably if he was in that river that he'd probably come up around springtime that they'd be able to look that outcome. I didn't know he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Megan, uh, I'm very, very sorry for your loss, honey. Thank you. If you can reach out to us, I will do whatever I can to promote and get information out there for you. Same well, thing with I cannot the- get... I can't get my pictures to load. I did email them to you, though. Okay. Okay. I'll see if I can uh, pull them up here and uh, in just a moment. Uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll let you. I'm sorry. I go ahead. Like hear, uh, Megan's story. I don't know if you guys talked about it before I got on, but I didn't hear it. If you did, I would give me a video. Yeah, go ahead, Megan. Um, okay, I'm getting. Uh, I'm going to get the police report and I'm going to read what it says. And uh, then I'm going to. Well, first, I'll tell you what I was told by the coroner the day that they found him. So they found my brother. And they, the girlfriend, it's just, it's real. It's really weird. His girlfriend did notify me and let me know on the 19th that she did not know where he was and wanted me to go look for him. I told her, you know, you guys get into fights all the time. I can't do this. Uh, I'm pregnant. And she was like, okay, I'm sorry. Just hang in there. Like, I'll let you know if I see him. I was on my way to Virginia the next day for a graduation party. Um, I was right at the exit from Morgantown when my father called me and told me that he was dead. And I said, are you serious? And he said, look, I don't know what to do. I told the the coroner that your mother was the next of kin. I said, dad, you're his next of kin too because you're his living parent. And he said, well, just get a hold of your mom. So I did. And my mom said that she could not talk to the coroner. So I was on the phone with her and the coroner told me that they found my brother hanging from a tree. And I said, how do you know that it was him? And the girlfriend that did not know where he was, was called by a neighbor to positively ID him. And she did so. And then I just actually got the police report yesterday. It's right here. I sent you a picture of it. The police report says, and they're the first people to get there before the coroner even got there. It says 5-20-2021. I found a body in the woods behind the Second Baptist Church. Uh, out here, out here walking up a path. And then unit 72 said, I found him. And it says Clarence, Clarence Dobbins was walking in the woods behind Manaka Street and Woodland Hills came up came upon what appeared to be a dead body. Um, Robert Smith, the patrolman, Robert Smith and his officers met Dobbins at the mainland gas station in East End. Dobbins led officers up a path that, the, yeah. that Dobbins was walking. Dobbins stated there's a man on his knees with a small rope or cord around his neck up that path. Officers went up the path and found Michael Leak with a black nylon rope around his neck, leaning forward while on his knees. It appeared Leak had been there a while as apparent as apparent ligature had set in in both arms. Coroner officer was notified. ASI ambulance and fire units arrived on the scene. Coroner investigator Wade arrived on the scene. While moving the deceased to the ambulance, Jessica Wooten, Leek's girlfriend, came to the ambulance where the ambulance was parked and spoke to Wade and confirmed the deceased was Leek. We got... Wade got information and contacted Leek's family and made the notification. But in that report, in the report, it states that he was 
walking up a hill. The story that Dobbins told my family is that he was on his way to work. He was walking to work from LaBelle Terrace and he tripped and he, when he went to stand up, he was face to face with my brother. He said he got scared. He told my mom he ran back to LaBelle, but the police report definitely shows that he did not. He went to the gas station over the hill and they told me that my brother was hanging from a tree and how was he hanging from a tree if he's on his knees no. I'm so and those right there that you are showing me are messages that we got confirmation on the 20th the next day or the day after that those are when i got those messages from my brother's girlfriend and in one of these messages, it's actually in that message, but I have a blown up part of it. Um, Roger Ingram Sr. states that he know. I know that you don't want to do anything if Cagney's involved. And so what if he uh, may have killed your buddy? And these are the messages that East Liverpool police don't want. Wow. Um, it's unbelievable. It's just ridiculous. Like I don't understand. I know my brother was on he heroin for 10 years, but he was clean. And in these messages, that's actually the message right there. Okay. I, I just, I just have to say for, uh, you know, legal purposes, I can't confirm that any of this is correct or true or whatever, but, it, uh, these are messages that, um, that you're presenting to us. Um, uh, everybody's uh, innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. I just, just, uh, legal purposes. I got to say that <laughs> So right. these are just, these are just speculations at this point. Uh, you know, we, maybe later that, uh, maybe if it does, uh, get investigated, who knows, maybe that could change. Um, but yeah, it says all I had her ask you a question and we're not dragging you in the middle of, okay. Um, the police yeah. should all of that information though they told me to take it to the coroner mm. and what the coroner has nothing to do with investigating that's it's just it's terrible yeah that's exactly. what i was just gonna ask what 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 does the coroner how does the coroner investigate a, no uh, to do uh, their job <laughs> in the department over there nobody wants to do their job just like they're not looking for my brother they don't they're not looking for him Exactly. There's a, okay, there's there, there's a lot in here, but yeah, I, I I think I think we get the the gist of it. It's uh, uh, uh is the police report in here? Uh, at the end there is the uh, the uh thing I just read. The initial okay. police report is in there in the end. Okay. Uh, oh, this is a, uh, that's it. That's his toxicology because in, uh, uh, my brother was on heroin, like I said, for 10 right. years, he was recovering. Right. And in those messages, it stated that two of the guys that there are pictures of, which, which would be Cagney Springer and, uh, Josh Rutter gave him heroin or not heroin, but, uh, meth and Coke. And he tested positive for both of them. Hmm. That that's what I that's the police report. Okay. Yeah, I see where it says uh I found a body in the woods behind the Second Baptist Church. Yes. Out here walking up the path. Um Oops. Um let me see here. Let's see, let me scroll back down to that. It would probably be towards the end. Megan, was there a time on that? Um, yeah, there was timestamps on it. It was, uh, I want to believe, hold on. I'm getting it back out. Um, 
when he called in and said that, that he had found a body in the woods, that was at 1241. I'll let you go ahead and read the rest of it. It's kind of hard for me to see it from here, but maybe you can, uh, if you want to read the rest of that, uh, you can go ahead, uh, Megan. Yeah, he uh, at 1241 is when he called it in and said that he had found a body in the woods. At 1242, uh, it says up here walking up the path. And then um, at 1246, that is when unit... 72 had found Clarence Dobbins at the gas station. And that's when he told him that he was walking in the woods behind Manaka street in Woodland Hills um, and came upon what appeared to be a, a dead body. And Robert Smith and his officers was at the gas station with Dobbins. Dob Dobbins led officers to the path that he was walking and he stated there's a man on his knees with a small rope or cord around his neck. Officers went up the path and that's when they found Michael Lee with a black nylon rope around his neck, leaning forward on his knees. And it appeared that he had been there for a while because Livature has set in in his arms. The coroner officer was notified. Mm. And there are three. Um, okay, so like I said, Michael and Billy were friends. They they actually used to cut trees down together. My brother cut trees for a living. Yeah, and yes, that she that he was cutting trees for her. Um, um, hmm. the tree that uh, That's they Billy said Hart he did it on legit only has one branch on it. And my brother, since he had got clean, he was probably a 190 to 200 pounds <laughs> that that's a clean him <laughs> wow. and that branch would have never held him and his neck was broke uh but he was on his knees how do you break your neck on your knees was the i'm not was that was there anything hanging on that branch no and you could see where, okay, so like at the bottom of the tree, we do have a memorial set up for him. At the bottom of the tree, it looks like somebody took like a rope and just went up and down on it. But uh, it, it just, it doesn't set right with me. I know my brother. He was a lot of things. My mom has stage four bone cancer and he promised me that he would be with me through it. But if something happened to her, he does not know what he would do. He would have never left me to deal with all of this. It's, a, it's very sad, and I'm sorry that this has happened to you. Um, I, uh, I'm baffled by this. It's honestly hard to say what may exactly have transpired. Um, and to be honest, he has three kids, uh, and he wouldn't have left them without saying goodbye. I'm so sorry that your yeah. family not being like, it's just sad that they won't listen to nobody. Yeah. My heart goes out to you. Our hearts go out to you. That's terrible. Uh, especially with the holidays right around the corner, literally. Yeah. My daughter, she hates her birthday now because she was born in May. So she hates her birthday. Son. Yeah, last year was our first holidays. Like at that happened when Billy came up missing, it was a week before Thanksgiving. And I mean, you know, if they don't do anything, I just hope that they help you find closure because I know what it's like knowing that my brother's gone, but not knowing would hurt even worse. It's very hard. Oh boy, it 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 is. Uh, we've got someone else joining in. Um, Kayla Ketchum. Uh, anybody know <laughs> that, Kayla Ketchum? Yes, that is actually uh, my brother's children's mother. Oh wow! Hello, Kayla. Hello. Hi. 
Thank you for joining us. I'm, I'm sorry about the circumstances, but I want to thank all of you for being here. I uh, appreciate all of you speaking up and speaking out about this. Uh, William Williams uh, is backstage, but uh, they need to connect their microphone and their camera before we can bring them into the stream. So um, and, uh, whoever William William is, I'm sure I'm trying to join. Um, That's Patina's son. Okay, Patina's son. Uh, if we get his camera and his mic connected, we can bring him on here with us. Um, we have Melissa Michael. We have Megan Leak. Um, uh, Megan, uh, Megan Leak is just speaking about her brother uh, who sadly lost his life. And we're not really quite sure. I mean, it's, ruled as a, uh, it's ruled as a suicide, but uh, questionable circumstances regarding it. Um, she has a lot of questions as to if it's... And I uh, mean... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I drove cab and you wouldn't... I have not been in East Liverpool for a long time. And I drove cab in East Liverpool. And a lot of people didn't know who I was. And you would not believe the amount of people that get into a cab and tell you stuff until they find out that they're talking about your brother. Yeah. You want to, do you want to tell everybody about that? You can go ahead. And if you want to share that, some of your yes, experience uh, as a cab driver, go ahead. Yes, I will. Um, I was in the cab with somebody. It was a guy. Um, he didn't know that my brother, that Michael was my brother. He got in the cab. I always carry the paperwork from the funeral home. It's in my passenger seat visor. Um, and he said he was talking and he was like, yeah, it's just crazy uh, that, you know, that Michael Lee thing uh, that they just shoved him in a trash bag and moved him. And the only thing that was hanging out with it was his feet and I said excuse me and the and he said yeah him in a trash bag and he was tall and his feet were the only thing hanging out I said well do you want to flip down that visor right there and he flipped it down and he said how do you know him I said that's my brother wow. that's disturbing I know mama this house is so can um to go to the police department. It's a small town and everybody talks. Did and I hope that to, with us doing this, that, you know, Melissa will get some kind of closure and, you know, the cops might do their job or might listen. Yeah, it's a, it's very disturbing that, uh, uh, on both of these cases, Megan, even though you, you know, you, you have your brothers. You still uh, hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, yes. I, I guess it's just the, the question marks as to why things are the way they are. Sometimes it's just unexplainable. Sometimes maybe they don't know themselves. Maybe they don't want to talk about it. I don't know. It's a, uh, very concerning and, and, you know, I, I, I think I understand where you're coming from. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Um, I want to thank you for being here. We're talking about uh, Billy Hart, William Hart, William Hart, and uh, talking about Megan Leake's uh, brother, who sadly lost his life, um, Michael Keith Leake Jr. Um Apparently, it's, it's ruled a suicide, but there's a lot of questions as to whether it truly was a suicide or was it a uh, play. we got a lot of questions. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share this video. Um, Love Bug says that's so very terrible. Uh, Heather Elliott says no child should hate their birthdays. Tyson Chicken Nugget says, sending prayers. Um, yeah, it is a very sad, sad story. It truly is. Um, well, so we're, uh, what are, what are your, your thoughts? Uh, I guess we'll ask Amber. Are you there, Amber McElroy? Uh, Amber bounced out. Patina Williams, what are your thoughts on this? It's sad 
the stuff that goes on here. I mean, in the police department, it really seems like they are not doing their job. And Megan's got the paperwork right there. I mean, even what I mean, you got tip lines. What are they for if you're not going to do a job? She's got tips there. You need to investigate it. Just like when Melissa just had someone say they thought they seen her. I went down to Weirton Police Department, talked to, I don't know if he was a detective, but an officer down there told him about the video that needed the response of the police department requesting the video footage to produce to see if it was Billy Hart or not. And soon as I showed the officer Billy Hart's picture, he said, wow, he said, he has a double, but that's not him. But he said, I will go down there and request the video and watch it, but I'm sure I know who it is. But at least that officer in Wheaton is taking effort to do a job of verifying if it's him or not, you know. It's not much to ask. To look over some paperwork that you have. St. Clair officers, uh, Hildebrand was the arresting officer uh, for Billy, and they, in the body cam video, were making fun of him, like saying, you know, oh, well, maybe he'll, we'll get lucky and he'll jump out the back of the ambulance and. Oh, we wouldn't want him to do that. We wouldn't want to run him over. Ha, 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 ha. You know, it, it, it's ridiculous. Very unprofessional. Yeah. A lot of times these smaller departments have kind of a good old boy system. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like guys hanging out of the golf course, you know, and I, I think they they think it's funny when they, they, they say things like that. But when you have a family member that, goes missing or loses their life it's uh very very real and very serious and very tragic and uh, if it was one of them officers kids or family members they wouldn't appreciate someone talking about their family loved ones like that exactly and would be arresting someone for saying such a thing oh no if it was a family of one of the cops the boats would have been out in the water the canine yeah, units would have brought it absolutely up. melissa it would have 100 percent but yeah. because you no know, drugs were involved and he's just a nobody i guess so he wasn't worth their time um uh, let me see sally may says did they not remember the body cam <laughs> yeah uh, well, it's hard to see. It took Melissa a long time to even get body cams. Wait, Mama. Yeah, they told me. Uh, I did another podcast with someone else. I don't even remember the name, but I said on there, you know, that they told me I wasn't getting Wait, the body Mama. cam without a lawyer. And the next couple of days, I got a call and said they called and said your stuff's ready. <laughs> so I don't know. I did go over huh. and pick it up and. Do you, do you still have that video or did you get the video? Um, I have the one from St. Clair. I'm not sure. I have a it on a zip drive, oh, well, but the oh. one from Liverpool. Oh, I wonder if we can share that on the, I don't know if you want to try to share it. If you want to see if we can share it or. I'm not sure if I've, I, I don't, maybe on another one. I, I'll have to look for it because I'm not sure exactly where I put it. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but the one from East Liverpool they sent as a as a link and it disappeared after so many days. Oh, so okay. I that one. It expired. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the one where they were tasting, you know. They the cop car pulled up and said, you know, come on, don't quit, don't run, whatever, get in the car. And he Billy says something to the effect of, What's that? Like you didn't hear him. And he said it again and Billy took off running. You could not see him in the video, but you could tell I could tell it was his voice. So I know for a fact it was him. Yeah. Um, Kayla, you're kind of quiet. What's your thoughts on all this? Um, 
play, play, play. It's really hard for me to talk about it. Elijah, um, shh. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Patty, do uh, you have anything to say about this? What are your thoughts? Patty Watkins? Uh, let me get Patty. Um, Amber, are you there, Amber? I think Amber's, uh, yes, I'm Amber. here. I'm just, I'm just listening. What, what are your thoughts on all of this, Amber? Oh, I think it's been a really long time, and I think it's very frustrating that no one is doing anything. Billy's my brother as well. I'm Melissa's sister. Oh, okay. So, um, so, uh, so wait a minute. You're saying that that Melissa's your sister, so Billy, Billy's your brother, is what you're saying? Yes. Correct. Yes. Oh wow. Yes. Okay. 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 Just want to make sure I heard that right. Wow. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you're that you're you're going through this. Uh, Thank you. you. That you and your family are going through this. This, this is terrible. Um, I'll let you go ahead and continue on. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Me? Oh, I I'm I'm not really good at talking. I, I don't okay. have a lot to say. <laughs> well, it's just very I mean, frustrating, and I know my sister's done everything in her power to get answers that we're just, it's all dead ends. Everything is just a dead end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we're seeing that. And I, I hope that changes. I hope that we can uh, shine a light on this and get, uh, get somebody out there to look for. Her. I mean, I think they need to search that river. I mean, I don't know what's involved in doing that. Um, I, know I, I have that. begged them. I, I don't know how many times I've asked the officer here in Hancock County about a river search. And it's always been, you know, well, they said they're going to do it, but it never happened. And or their boats broke or I, I don't know. It, I mean, it's been 10 months. You tell and what's me really sad is that getting the news reporters like our local news company around here. What was it? 30 seconds they did. Yeah, they did an interview with me and like put a 30 second segment of it on the news. That was after begging and begging and begging. Uh, I did go to a board meeting, me and my sister, um, at St. Clair Township. It just, it just doesn't matter. We can beg all we want. They're not gonna. They're not out there looking for him. They're not. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, obvious. Last time I spoke with the captain, it just sounded like everything points to that river. Everything points. Um, Officer Lane uh, needs to get tell the truth. Uh, uh, pa uh, Patty, what do you, what are your thoughts, uh, Patty? I think Patty was. Uh, we're trying to get Patty to say, Patty, are you there, Patty Watkins? Uh, Pat. Um, not sure what's going on with Patty. Uh, so yeah, we, we're talking about Billy Hart possibly being in that river. If he if he was in the river, I guess the question would be where where would he be now? I mean, if he if that is the case that he did go into that river, you know, that's the thing. He could be anywhere. He could be anywhere, or he could be close by. I mean, they're never going to know if he's there, or not there, if, if they don't look. I mean, there's just no way to know. Exactly, Melissa. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty big river. Um, I'm not sure which way the current flows. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it flows south. I'm not sure. I'm assuming it flows south. Yes. Yeah. I talked to one of the engineers at the Stratton Dam which is what you say 10, 12 miles from Liverpool South. Yeah. And they check those dams thoroughly twice a night. And I left information there to contact. You said the, Strat the Stratton Dam? Dam? Yes. New is that called Stratton or Empire? So that would be right here. So there's wow. They so weren't they even right aware there. of somebody mi being missing when I called and talked to them. 
Okay. That's, That's interesting. Right so, I mean, okay. So, yeah, okay. So, there's a dam right there. So, uh, I'm assuming they, if that was the case, that they, he, they, that would probably be where he, if he, it's just assuming he did float down that far. Right. Now, that would probably be where he, he, he would be the somewhere there. The person I spoke to, they said, you'd be surprised the people they find, even from down south in the dam, as far as, um, Mississippi up this and like how would they get this far they get caught on barges and when they come up the river they end up breaking away and getting caught up in the dams that's what the gentleman told me on the phone wow like he that, said, is, that is interesting yeah that, that's a big river that's a huge river mm. yeah I'm just begging anybody, if they know something, to please say something. We just want closure. Uh, what happened to my brother? Absolutely. My number is everywhere. I mean, you don't even have to tell me who you are. If You know, I will listen. You can be anonymous. I don't, I don't care. If you know something or you heard hearsay, I would like to know. Because I believe that somebody does know something. Okay. Um, yeah. So if he's, yeah. Uh, what's that number again? If you want to get that number out again or. My number. Yeah. If you want to, if sure. anybody has information as. It's 330-831-7579. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Patty Watkins, uh, what's your thoughts? We've been trying to get, get you to get a word in. I know you, you're there, Patty. We keep losing Megan. She keeps bouncing out. Um, yeah, it's a sad story. It appears to me that the law enforcement is really, um, I don't know. They Maybe they're just lacking resources because it's a smaller town. It's a smaller area. Maybe they're. They don't no. have the uh, uh, resources available to handle this. They not... they have boats. They have canine units. They do have some resources. Maybe not as much as big cities, but they do have resources that they didn't right. even use. I mean, they just didn't use anything. Hmm. You know, and really, I don't understand. I don't know if it was, you know, time for their shift change or whatever there was no reason for them to leave the hospital. It wasn't because they got another call or they were busy. They simply said, we don't feel like sitting here with you. I mean, that's what they said. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. I just feel that if they would, you know, I know that if they would have stayed there with him, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. That's a, it's a terrible, terrible uh, situation it's it's a tragedy i mean this is your brother you guys love him he's got a sister uh, uh kayla's his sister correct or, is it, or was it amber i'm, amber. I'm sorry it was and amber. Before sorry, amber anybody comments on the video saying you know he ran it's his fault i never said that he never you know he did wrong yeah. i know what he did was wrong but they did not do their job no matter yeah. what they did they did not do their job well the the point is you, you know he, he's still a human being he's okay. still a human life uh, right. regardless of what people you know what, what what people's opinions may be um this is still somebody i do, yeah. I do not sorry. condone anything you know that he did he shouldn't have ran no he shouldn't have put what well they said he put something in his mouth and swallowed something if he did that he shouldn't have done that no he shouldn't have you know, yeah. but he was still a human being and he still should have been worth their time. Their job is to protect and serve. They did not do either. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, you guys deserve answers. Um, just like Megan does as well. Um, I mean, it's a tragedy. These are two guys that are 
possibly no longer with us because we don't really know what happened to, to William. Uh, he may still be alive. We don't really know, but it appears that uh, he may have went into that river from what everything is. Uh, <laughs> everything I, leads to that river, unfortunately, sadly. I, no, I really hope I'm wrong. I hope yeah. that he is. I hope he is out there running somewhere. I really do, but I don't. I don't see. I just don't, I don't see him doing that. Not for this long. I just don't. Yeah, and you had to go to his apartment. You said right, and and get all his belongings, and it, everything was still there. Uh, yeah, I cleaned out his apartment um, a month or two after he went missing. And everything was still the same. I, I went there several times to uh, check and see if anything had been moved or if it looked like, you know, someone had been there. N nothing was ever moved. He, he was never there. Um, love this says how sad. Um, love bug 53 says they sound lazy. You need to go higher than them. I don't know what other, uh, the only thing I can think was the like, attorney general, when you say go higher, I don't know, uh, like a, a, like a state, uh, attorney general or something to that level. I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, uh, a volunteer group possibly to, to search that river. Didn't, um, wasn't there something said about the attorney general couldn't do anything about it. They would have to go to the BCI, Melissa. Yeah, I'm trying to think, and I can't remember what. Like everything that I we tried, it just like. That's Alan's. They, what he's he called the attorney general, and that's what he just said. He, they told him that. That's and it's where it came from. Place to call, they just like, oh well, you know, we don't deal with that. Call this person. We don't deal with that. It's just they just pass it on to somebody. Pass it on to somebody else, and you just never get anywhere, no matter what you do. Nobody will investigate it. Yeah. Megan's brother, they don't want to investigate the information she's got. It's Liverpool's that. too Liverpool's too lazy and they also are too busy covering their own selves up in different situations. If you look into their police department, you will see a lot of things that are being covered up by that police department. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I don't doubt it. I I, like I said, I don't know if it's just because they're understaffed. They just don't want to deal with it. Um, it's sad when you have two families that are seeking answers. and uh, They can blame understaffed for this situation because, like I said, there was six cops down there at the time, you know, that he was down there. It was... You know, St. Clair Township, East Liverpool, and then there I think there was a um East Liverpool Township officer also. They they just I don't know, they just didn't do their job. I mean, how can you have six cops and only one have a body cam on? That doesn't even make sense. No. Yeah. Uh that Meg, happens more you more still here. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Go ahead. You still hear us all? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Is that uh, who's that? Was that Patty talking or is that Amber? I'm sorry. No, Megan sent me a Megan. private message. It said she couldn't hear. I was just asking her if she could okay. hear. Yeah, can you? Um, okay. Uh, we're talking about Billy, Billy Hart, and we have Michaela Smith with us. She also lost her brother. No, no. Uh, um, it's Megan. I'm on Michaela. I'm, I'm, so, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Threw me off daughter, there. I'm sorry. sorry. Megan, uh, Megan lost her brother. Sadly, uh, it's it's sad. You know, it's a small town, and these are tragedies. Uh, drugs are a big problem. I've covered this a lot. I've and I, you know, I, I can, I, you know, I'm, I'm in Arizona. I'm, I've been screaming about the border for years, decades. Uh, about the border problem with the drugs being brought in from south of the border. And it saddens me to see the, the devastation that it does to small towns all in big cities as well all across America. Um, 
it's sad. What? It's sad. Um, I try to picture what the world would be without drugs, without illegal substances. Um, families are destroyed. It's sad. Uh, not just saying that this is all drug related, but it has played a role. Um, these agencies, however, need to set that aside and still do their absolute best to, you know, retrieve the bodies, find the find the answers, get to the bottom of both of these uh, situations, these incidents. It, it's a, it's a sad and it's sad. I mean, I feel for all of you. Holidays are coming up, and you know. I, you know, you're just waiting for answers. Nobody, and it, it feels like this falls on deaf ears. Like nobody wants to help. Um, we pay taxes to these agencies that seem like they just they just uh, are marginal at best. Um, and I cover cases like this all the time, where you know these agencies, these government agencies, fell time and time again. Uh, you know, the cost for a private investigator to pursue these, it could cost, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And I'm sure nobody has that kind of money. Uh, uh, I don't know. Where do we go from here? Can we get a, I don't know. Is there a volunteer group? Maybe. I don't know. Can the Coast Guard, what do we, how do you get the, how do you get somebody involved to drag that river? I mean. We're well, open um, for suggestions if anybody's got any ideas out there how to get them to do it. Yeah. Yeah. When I spoke with him, it didn't seem like he was very interested at all. He was, um, but yeah, I, I would urge them to to do so. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. People pay taxes. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure it's a big job. It's a challenge, but. I mean, and you would think that when someone was missing, you know, they would put it on the local news and they would keep putting it on the local news. Like, you know, this person's been missing since November, you know, any information, they, they haven't, like, they didn't even do that. I got Gene Leslie, it's been missing now, well, the last thing that we saw before, 15, 20 years ago, and he's still missing, I ain't found him yet. There's a lot of people missing, you know, and I know that a lot of people just never find their loved ones. And it, it, I never thought we would be in that situation ever. Sally May says, my dad was a cop back in the day in Toronto. They were much better. Yes. Uh, I think people cared more. I think people cared more, sadly. Uh, Lovebug53 says, see something, say something. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, you guys deserve answers. No, no doubt about it. Um, you know... I think it's just important to keep talking about it, keep sharing these stories. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that uh, 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 Split Spliffy says uh, News Nine likes to cover stuff up too. News Nine. <laughs> News Nine <laughs> did my interview, and like I said, a lot more than what they put on there. But <laughs> they only pretty much put on there. You know, if you're out there somewhere, come home. Pretty much. They left everything else out that I said. Yeah. I, I I suspicion if he was out there, I think he would have said something by now. What do you think? I mean, what are your thoughts? I absolutely. Go ahead, Melissa. I absolutely think that he would have said something. Um, you know, he just had a baby daughter born two months ago. Um, his other daughter's 10. I just, I don't see... Oh wow! I really yeah. don't. So he has a daughter that was born, and he didn't even get to—he wasn't even there for it. Correct. Oh, that's terrible. Mama. That's terrible. Uh, Sally May says, "What about the Ohio Bureau of Insta Investigation? Oh, the Ohio Bureau of Insta Investigation. Uh, yeah. That's something to think about. I didn't, um, you know, Ohio. Uh, you're in a different state from me, so I'm, I'm not sure what agencies they have that can help." I'm kind of, you know, I'm thinking for accountability, there has to be some something in place. I think there, there has to be something in place for accountability. Families deserve answers. You can't just leave uh, two families hung out to dry. I mean, th these are people that are part of a uh, community. They're part of our society. 
Uh, I know it's a small town, but still, they deserve the, they do, they're entitled to the answers. I mean, uh, to be treated fairly and with dignity and respect. I feel horrible for all of you. I mean, to me, it's unfair the way you're all that all of you are being treated. Um, you know, like I said, especially with the holidays coming up, not not very far. Right? Think about it; it's almost October. Uh, Halloween will be here. I'm not sure where you guys are. It's probably getting ready to snow here soon. Um, yeah, we spent our f- first holidays last year without knowing where he was. I just, I really didn't think that we would be spending another one. Yeah, that's sad. That is very sad. That is very sad. I'm. And I'm sure with it, Megan feels the same way. Uh, Megan's a strong girl. <laughs> Melissa, you're, sp- you're strong women. And I'm, I'm sorry that you're going through this. Um, uh, Spliffy in the comments. Spliffy says that there has to be a way to put in a lawsuit against the station for not taking this investigation seriously. Um, I do know that um, the after my brother passed away, the feds was in town. Because I made sure that my family members that had contact with them reached out, but nothing got done. Uh, yeah, I think that's the problem is that there's going to have to be a higher agency that oversees this police department. And I think they're going to be the ones that have to get involved to push uh, the, this the, this police department, I guess, to uh, do more uh, and help help search for this guy. I mean, this is a uh, this is terrible. I can't imagine this. Uh, uh, you know, they they pursued him down there. I, I yeah, you're. I think Melissa she br- she brought up a great point that they didn't have any dogs down there. They didn't have any boats down there. It's just like. Uh, they uh, they called it they called off the the chase, but I yeah. don't know. With that, with that, you know, I think they should have done more, in my opinion. They uh, definitely sure he, he wasn't in that river. I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead. They definitely should have done more. I mean, you're chasing a human towards a river. You can't find this person. Why would you not call the boats? Why? Why? There's like. I want to know why. why wouldn't you accept help from the other officer that suggested him to go up on the bridge and shine his spotlight if your flashlight went dead? Hello, here's your sign. Yeah, yeah, I'm I agree. Sorry. It's like they were ready to go off shift or something. I, I don't know. It's just like they didn't. They didn't. Thirty nine minutes is nothing. I mean, especially like. Us as uh, friends and family w- went down there and searched through. It's so thick down there, the brush and stuff along the river. Y- you wouldn't get nowhere in 39 minutes. Like, really. It's just. I-, I don't understand. And, you know, they didn't find him. They knew he was at risk for overdosing. Do you think they went back like the next day to check and or you know search then no it was never nothing was ever done any more than that 39 minutes that's it yeah that's uh, that's ridiculous i that's why 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 you know officer to look at the river and say holy shit it was not because a rock fell off of the bridge and startled him. There's no rocks on that bridge. It is a metal bridge. There, there's no rocks. I want to know why they said that. I want the truth. Yeah. It, it is a, that is a huge river. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they they basically pursued him down here somewhere, and uh, I silently may said someone earlier said that the cop told the lady at the hospital he just signed his death warrant. Is that true? I don't know. Did you read that, Melissa? I can't see the comments. I don't. Um. 
go down to the bottom. See, see where it says chat. Yeah. Click on chat. Then click on the comments if it doesn't pop up automatically. Okay. Sally May said someone earlier said that the cop pulled the lady at the hospital. He just signed his death warrant. Is that true? Um, I I don't know. Uh, so he uh, yeah. So this uh that looks like a pretty steep drop off there too. If he fell, that looks pretty steep. Off the, There's off a the bank beach there. down there uh, along that river bank uh, where the pillar the bridge. Un, just to the north of that bridge there's a partial pillar that you can anchor up a barge to and just below it between the bridge and it there's a sandy beach area there. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. That is uh more. And, and so it so I I'm so it was dark out when they pursued him, right? It was it was nighttime. Yeah, I can't remember the exact time, but it was uh, 11 what was it 11 something patina or Okay, okay. I don't have No, it was earlier than that. I thought it was 9. Yeah, I think it was but it, I, it was it was dark enough to, to where he wouldn't have been able to see probably where he was going is what I'm thinking. You know, I kind of wonder if he just accidentally. All he would have had to do was run across that bridge. He lived on he lived in Knoll on the other side of that bridge. So if he exited the hospital, he could have ran across the river. I I wonder if maybe that's what he was trying to do. I wonder if he was trying to get to that bridge. No, because I think, uh, from what I understand, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Where he was walking would have been like walking away from the bridge. Yes, headed toward the east end area. Yeah, towards like east end, which is uh, an area that there's a lot of drugs. <laughs> You see um, where the off ramp is there, where the one white dot is. Just above that is where the cops watched him go across. Okay. And you said, Anthony, when you talked to them, they said that they didn't pursue him. Well, no, 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 no. He said they, no, he, he said that they pursued him, but it was only up to, I believe when we, when we had him, when I talked to him, I think he said it was up to where there was a guard. I thought he said it was a guard rail. And he, they said at the point where he jumped over a guard rail, which I think it was up here somewhere around on yeah. this, uh, wherever it was, he, they said he went over a guard rail. And when I, when I spoke to him, he said after that, they gave it up. They're like, they just, they called out the chase. That's what he That's had told a lie. Me. That's a lie. Because they, they were down on the riverbank. The river under the bridge. That guardrail he's talking is right there where that off ramp is, Anthony. Yeah. The uh, to the highway. There's Amber like McElroy uh, is joining us. Amber, hello, Amber McElroy. Sorry, I was already here. I just got kicked off, but I'm back. No, okay. okay. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes we get bad connections and. Uh, Jen 23 says, I, I agree. Many don't consider addicts life a worth saving, saving, and they are probably the ones who, who need it. Um, yeah, I love this says that, uh, this is a sad, it's a horrible story. Uh, Jen 23 says, I've seen this firsthand when drugs come up, the police seem to not even try. I actually heard them say about my, my boyfriend, it wasn't a big loss. And they weren't going to kill themselves trying to find find an addict. That's sad. Uh, yep, Jen twenty three. Yeah, I that's agree. Just, that's yeah. disgusting. I completely agree. You know, is. drugs don't discriminate. Drugs can be in any family, like, and I know that these cops have have, you know, 
family. And it, I just pray that they don't have to ever deal with this, you know, deal with something like this. Yeah, this is this is tragic. I, I feel for all of you. I truly, I truly do. This is this is because uh, I remember when we first covered this story, and um, I mean, it's like we're still uh, with no answers. I don't know. I think if uh, if he was around, I think he would have uh, contacted somebody, a friend, and well, I mean, you know, maybe like I said earlier, uh, this is a small town, and everybody knows somebody you know if he was around someone would have said something someone would have seen him some i don't think he if he is by some miracle out there alive he's not here yeah. I, I think he would be no, there's no way people talk you know? right yeah but that is that is very true that they do and uh, i think you know, like I, I, w I was going to say, you could even put a postcard in the in the mailbox and send it to somebody if he was, you know, afraid that uh, he was going to get caught or something like that. You know, because I think we had, like you said, they mentioned it was going to be a felony charge if he left the hospital. You know, I thought, well, maybe if he ran in fear, you know, it's still you, you, he would want to make contact. And I don't think he would want his family to worry uh, if he was alive. I think he would want everyone to know that he was alive and OK. That's my opinion. That's my opinion too, but I hope I'm wrong. Um, Patty Watkins, are you there? Oh. Then we get Patty. Uh, see where her take is on all this. Um, got everybody here. I want to thank everybody for being here. Hit that like, subscribe. I appreciate everybody being here. We're talking about uh, missing Billy William Hart. William goes by Billy also. William Hart. Uh, you know, we covered that story about eight or nine months back, and uh, still no word. Still no word at all as to where he is at. Um, and uh, Megan, Megan lost her brother, uh, Michael Keith Leak Jr. Uh, wrote a suicide, but we question the uh, authenticity. There's a lot of, lot of mystery. A lot of mystery. Uh, when you have a, a small agency that just doesn't seem to want to go the distance, I guess, you know, they just uh, leave an entire family hanging. Uh, so we're sharing this story. I want to uh, please share this uh, story on all your social media platforms. Uh, we need to get the word out about what's happening to these families and uh, see if maybe we can uh shine some light on this and get people to uh, be engaged and help and uh, see if we can get this agency moving and do more. Sally May says it is so small. I was shocked when I saw Tony was going to be talking about East Liverpool. <laughs> we cover stories all around the world, but mostly, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a small town, but Hey, we love small towns. Got to cover these. Um, uh, Sally May says, what are the circumstances of the other people you said were found after her brother was found? What are the circumstances? Go ahead. I know. I know that they did get justice for one of the boys. Um, but the other boy still no justice for him. Uh, the one boy that actually on May 20th, the boy that they found before they found my brother was shot between five and seven times and he was found dead in his car. Oh, Not even man. a block from where they found my brother. That was by the gas station, wasn't it? Wow. The, yep. It was right by mainland gas station where the guy met the police to show him where my brother was. It was on Maple Tree. Uh, right up the street. Yeah, Dion. Yep. Up past uh, Gina's drive-thru. Nope, before Steve Gina's. Uh, Steve 8129 in the comments says, because they don't want to hold the cops accountable. <laughs> oh, I believe it. Uh, Tyson Chicken Nugget. I love that username. Tyson Chicken Nugget. Sounds like one of the, sounds like, like a username one of my kids would use. Uh, <laughs> Tyson Chicken Nugget says, I shared this. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, share it on your uh, social media platforms. Get the word out. Share it on your uh, your Twitter, your 
Twitch or whatever it is you got. There's so many Snapchats, Instagram, you name it. Got a lot of different. And then I know not even a month after those, they found my brother and Dion. Not even a month later, um, that's when I think his name is Braxton. That's when he was killed and he was 18. On a front porch right before ABC carryout. That's the one I was thinking of. I forgot about the other one. You know, when when I, when I was a young guy, I, I just uh, always thought small towns are just easy going, laid back kind of places. You never really heard of things like this happening. Not to say that it never happened, but, uh, you know, I hate getting political. But when you look at this administration, uh, crime is up everywhere. It really is. It's up everywhere. It's getting yeah. worse. Talk just to see like how many people are missing in West Virginia. It, it's it's shocking. Go on the missing in Virginia page. Oh my lord! And it's just not young girls, not young boys. It's all ages. Even that one doctor. It's terrible. Um, Jen twenty three says we have one of the biggest agencies in the states. And they don't do any better. I do think it's going to be the people who don't take their BS answers and keep the pressure on them. Yeah, that's what we have to do. We have to rattle the cages. Yeah. That's exactly what we have to do. Thank you, Jen23, for your comment. Uh, Sally May says it used to be a good place to live. Wow. It did. That's a powerful statement. Thank you, Sally May. Wow. Yeah, I know. When Even when I was younger... It wasn't like this. It really, I mean, the drugs it weren't like that. You didn't have to worry about, you know, where your kids were going or what they were, you know, getting offered by somebody or it's just, it's terrible. Yeah. Now you can't even go to a playground without finding needles or. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Even where yeah. I'm, even in the town I'm in, it's, it's the same way. It's, it is sad. Uh, and we've done shows on it. I think we're going to cover it again, how drugs is uh, drugs are destroying our families, our societies, our communities. Uh, they destroy families, too. And, you know, but like we've all said, just because there is drugs doesn't mean that it's not worth it. Should It doesn't matter. Shouldn't. Right. We should, no one should be discriminated against because of that. When it comes to the cops, you know, looking for someone or getting justice for someone or, you know. You guys deserve closure if, if that is indeed the case. If, if we, You know, like I said, we don't know if he's in that river. He could still be alive. I, I suppose there's a possibility that he could be. I don't know, you know, how likely that would be. But, I mean, it is it is possible that he's still out there somewhere. I mean, we can't rule it completely out. We just don't know. But that's where these agencies would, would need to be involved. I mean, um, I, I guess maybe one thing I, I should ask you, uh, Melissa, um, I just out of curiosity, has anybody done like a credit check or, you know, pull his credit report to see if there's any kind of activity? I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe he's working a job somewhere down south. Who knows? I, You never know. I mean. I, I believe the officer had mentioned at one point that the Hancock County that, you know, there was no activity that they could see from him. Yeah. But yeah. he didn't have, you know what I mean? He didn't have a debit card. I don't know. I just don't. Yeah. Oh, but I was thinking, you know, if he's working somewhere, you know, he's, he's maybe, yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah. With the social security number. I don't know. Maybe your mother and father could do it. Uh, you know, you gotta make sure you do it legally, of course, but right. Uh, you know, make sure you, uh, you know, they get a free credit report every year. Maybe see if, you, see if you can find a credit report on them. And see if there is any kind of activity You never know. I mean, it, uh, just to rule that out. I mean, I mean, find out he's working a job somewhere. Who knows? I, I best case scenario, I guess would be, He's still alive, working a job somewhere. Maybe, maybe started a whole new life over again. I don't know. Would he be the kind of guy to do something like that? It doesn't sound like it. Just doesn't sound like it. Yeah. Very. 
like a family person. Like, yeah. We're, we're a close family. Yeah. I know. I know that you are. I know that, you know, you, you know, I can't imagine what it would be like to, uh, uh, continue on like this, uh, where so many months have gone by and still not a single answer. Nothing. It sure did, Sally. It was national news. That was yes. everywhere. I was uh, just about to say that. <laughs> which was it? Which comment was that? Are you guys referring to a comment? About the... Sally said it is East Liverpool. That is where the, the picture of the two people passed out in the car. With oh, a yeah. year old in the background. They showed that picture on national news. That went everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, yeah, uh, Sally May says really I still have that pic. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's really sad. And that, um, you know, like uh, Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia, you got like an entire avenue where people are just like zombies, literally like zombies, mm -hmm. uh, because of the drug pandemic. It's 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 terrible. Uh, I think those were actually her grandparents or their grandparents that overdosed that the court had just gave custody to. Yeah. That was a grandmother and her boyfriend. Am I, am I mistaken? Yeah. Grandma and boyfriend. And they had just got custody in court of those kids that were in the car. And after that picture went viral, the kids were shipped off to, I believe North Carolina with the other grandparents. Yeah. Was it North Carolina or did yeah. they go up North? I know they took them out of the area, which was the best thing for them two kids. Or one. And, and we've got a big problem here in Arizona with fentanyl. I don't know if it, you have a problem with that in your area. You yeah. Are, it's it's a problem there as well. Uh, yep. Now they now they have rainbow colored fentanyl to target children. They make it look like candy. Mm -hmm. Targeting children. It's terrible. It was so bad here at one point. They didn't have enough ambulance through the night, nor enough Narcan to even to help everybody. It was horrid. Yep. What do what do we do? What can we do to maybe raise awareness to keep people off of drugs, to keep young kids off of drugs? What what do you think we can do better? Or I mean, well, I'm just I'm asking everybody on the panel, and even in the comments, uh, what do you think we can do I mean, for those of you watching? Uh, what can we do as a society to change the direction of our country? Because small town America, it's not just small town America. It, this is a kind of a, a, a worldwide, or at least nationally anyway, it's, a, it's an epidemic in America. Uh, this, this, this drug situation is really, it's frightening, to be honest. It definitely is. Uh, Gen, Gen 23 says that they need other options. People feel hopeless and lost. And I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think a lot of uh, sometimes it's, it, it, it seems like it's, it's socioeconomics, but it, it's not even just uh, people that are on the lower end of the of the, um, you know, the wealth spectrum, so to speak. It's it, it's people. Not just it's not just the lower class, lower class, middle class. It's it's also an upper class problem as well. Drugs are making their way into upper class families as well. It's not just uh, you know the uh, low lower income families. It's it's a problem amongst the wealthy as well. Um, yeah, my Megan and Melissa need good a really good attorney to do pro bono. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there's an attorney out there willing to help. That'd be great. Um, yeah, there's a lot of concerns about this. I, I don't understand how, um, uh, society just, these agencies just kind of turn their back and ignore it. And they're like, Hey, it's, uh, you know, we called out the search. It's not our problem at this point, but I, I, I feel like they, they do all, uh, uh, they do have a responsibility in my opinion to these families to, you know, bring closure. I mean, this has got to be, imagine if it was your son or daughter, um, you know, in this situation, I couldn't imagine. Uh, Addison uh, League says it's very sad. Yeah. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve, Steve, eighty one twenty nine says, let them see stuff like this show. Show them what it can do to families. Steve, eighty one twenty nine. Thank you. Um, it is heart wrenching. It truly is. It truly is. Um, 
Sally Mae goes on to say that my daughters have lost four friends to heroin overdose. That's horrible. It That's is horrible. terrible. And I think, I mean, I really don't know what the answer is. You know, I try to be just like open and honest with my kids. You know, this is what's going to happen. This could, ha this could happen. You know, you, you could die. Like people will offer you something. You never know what's in it. Like, yeah, good point. It's just, you know, I, I believe some people try to sugarcoat things and I just never did that with my kids. You know, I tell them how it is. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I always talk about drugs of the 1960s were kind of designed to have, they were designed for recreational use to have fun. You know, I never <laughs> used drugs, but anyway, drugs in the sixties were about having fun. 70s it was about having fun and then and now it's all about th these drugs that are being designed today are b being designed to, to kill people they literally are being designed to kill really, people you know it really doesn't make sense you know I, I don't understand why they would want to put something in there that's going to kill people like it, and that's how they're making their money it's, it's a, it doesn't make sense to me yeah you know. Well, you think about 9-11 and, you know, I mean, this is probably for a whole nother show, but uh, terroristic a acts. Dealer, a drug dealer don't have no conscience of it. Amen. Amen. Well said. That's a, that's a cold hard truth. They don't, but they're losing all their clients also. Well, the saddest part, Melissa, is the police department and the judicial system lets the drug dealers use their drug money to pay for attorneys they should uh -huh. stop that from happening they should seize that and they should tell the attorney prove where this gentleman got this money from working a legitimate job if not give him a public defender and throw him in jail yeah there you go amen and it's sad uh, because i know you know billy my brother has been in jail before and he he'd be the first one to tell you you know the drugs in the you can get drugs in jail easier than you think i mean it's all through the jail you know yeah, it it's but, not helping them sending them there yeah nope. drug i mean drugs are in jail too they get them in jail in prison they get drugs there yeah they need to send them send these people to rehabilitation facilities amen i agree yeah putting people in prison or jails for drugs it is not helping we're, we're losing the war on drugs i mean we've already lost the war on drugs uh, Mar Maria Marino uh, says, I lost my brother five years fresh out of a prison and he overdosed on heroin. Oh my God, that's horrible. Sorry, Maria. Uh, that, that, is a, that is sad. That is sad. Uh, Tyson Chicken Nugget says, yes, that's how I am with our kids. I always tell them the truth. Cliffy says, my uncle passed away four years ago, and my family believes that he was murdered, but the cops covered it up and said he did heroin, but there was no puncture from a needle. Uh, yeah, that's that's some of the things that happen, sadly. And it's it's really sometimes it's just hard to, to get the uh, get the, the straight answers. I don't know why it, it is. Um Drugs is a big problem, though. It is a huge problem. I hope we can get some answers for Melissa and her family and find Billy, uh, William Hart. I hope Megan can get some answers for her brother. Maybe they can reopen that investigation and pursue it further and go deeper into that, especially if you got people saying they know things. People that know things, they need to, they need to be talked with. Um, I think if somebody's out there saying that they have information like that, they, the uh, detectives need to grab that guy and take him into a dark room with a swinging light and get some answers out of him. Find Me out exactly what he knows. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Megan. The the person that was in the cab. Did you um report? Was that reported to the cops? Yes. And the sad part is, is uh because sometimes when I think about it, it I do get depressed about it because I know that he wouldn't have left me. Um, not that long ago, his daughter, his oldest daughter, um, was actually in a cab and somebody, this girl got in the cab and actually told her that um, 
the two two guys that were mentioned on the slide that I had um, lured her dad to the woods and they came out and her dad never did. And she called me at two o'clock in the morning and was like, Aunt Megan, do you think that the cops would do anything? And I'm like, you know, the kids are the ones that suffer because, yeah, my brother has he has a lengthy track record of heroin abuse, 10 years. And, you know, his kids have to go to school with the kids of the people that said that supposedly did this to him and have to hear about how their dad is a junkie. And they're not supposed to fight back and defend their father. But just like I told you, oldest daughter, I said, you know what? That's fine. They want to call your dad a junkie. I said, your dad would be the first one to tell you, honey, I was. But when he died, he wasn't a junkie. Kid, kids can be mean. Kids can say things that are very mean. And my heart goes out to all the kids out there in school. I it's can't not, imagine what it's, it's like for these kids today. It's kids are very I'm so, I'm sad. Sorry. It's not just kids. No. It's, it's there there's a lot of adults i mean i had so many posts on you know people give it like negative comments which i, which I can let it roll off but it's it right. is like oh why are you looking for him he was on drugs or you know wasn't he running from the cops and you know yeah, yeah he's still my brother i still want to find him yeah i i had people oh. calling me saying the same thing and i i, I told him i said hey regardless of that, this is still a human being that he had a family, he had a mother, he had a father, he had, he had children, people that loved him, cared about him. Yeah. Maybe he but wasn't. Uh, we got know. so many ransom text messages too. Yeah. It was Scams. yeah. people saying that they had him and yeah. wanting thousands of dollars and sending me pictures of, you know, a guy's head in a bowl and. Oh my God just sick people that like are trying to make money off of a family's tragedy. Like it, it's unreal. I get messages like that all the time covering crimes. I believe me, I, I can relate. Yeah, <laughs> You'd I, be I, surprised I, some of this stuff. Scam artists. And I yeah. think like scam artist number 10, you know, it, it's, it's sick. Sometimes, sometimes it can be legit. I, I mean, if it's a phone call, but I got, I got a, I got a legit phone call one time, but, Probably ninety nine percent of the stuff I get is garbage. Yep. But you never know when that one tip comes in that it it's something to it. Well, I just tell them when they start texting me the stuff. You know, if you send me a picture with him with today's date, yeah, I'll sure you get your money. But until then, uh, don't send anybody money. That that's uh, you know you need to contact the FBI immediately or <laughs> contact the police if they don't help you. You definitely want to go to the FBI. But I'm I'm sorry, you got to go through that. that that's that's tormenting uh mental mentally that's horrible that's yeah, uh, that's that's a sh yeah and uh, you hear you uh, a lady uh, lost her brother and and they're gonna play these kind of games it's 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 truly sa uh, saddening the the state of the world that we are in um it truly no is. compassion no empathy uh nobody cares about anybody anymore it feels like sad it is very sad um yeah, I just I, I want you guys to get answers. I want you guys to bring closure to this. Uh, oh, yeah. It's been going on for a long time now. Um, and yeah, just like with Billy, um, I was uh, I was told after my brother passed that the day that he passed away, that he was causing trouble at a uh, establish, uh, establishment called Brickers, which is right down the street from the police station that he was pounding on the windows. If that was the case, you could have arrested him and he would still be alive. And then the same day, they said that um, he was at Sparkles Market, which is in East End, not that far from where they found him. Um, and he was running across the street in traffic and all this. He could have been arrested twice now, but nothing was done. And now he's dead. Yep. Oh. I, I, it's sick. Just like my brother being at the hospital with an officer handcuffed to the bed. 
and they let they took it off of him and let just said we're not sitting here with you you know it's just we're not you're not worth our time and the whole thing is like because i read up on your brother's case and stuff uh it stated that he was handcuffed in the back of the car when he supposedly took the stuff he was under arrest you should have never left him yeah, and I just kind of think it's funny. I don't know how they think that he was able to get something in his right. mouth with his hands cuffed behind his back. Exactly. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, before they put you in the cop car, they're supposed to search you. So then you're saying that they miss whatever you supposedly swallowed. <laughs> exactly and then they said um that there was powder substance on the seat that they were going to have it tested and i asked about that later and they're like oh uh well there wasn't enough bull crap bull crap you don't need all you need is uh, i mean any trace evidence could be tested that they, it's a it just doesn't make sense yeah and um for you saying that um that brings me to uh we did we had my brother cremated <laughs> and my car i got my car was pulled over and uh the cops actually took my uh necklace i had put it on my key ring because it was too heavy to wear so i put it on my key ring and the cops that pulled my car over actually confiscated it tested it to see if it was drugs and when it wasn't drugs they threw it away sorry to my family members that didn't know about that that just found that out but when it came back in, no, not drugs, they threw it away and then told me that the money I used to get uh, my car out of impound, I could just buy another uh, necklace with it because when you cremate somebody, there's always extra ashes. Oh, Unreal. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm it falls back to the cops being not doing their job. Yeah, this is sad. I'm so sorry for the way all of you have been treated. I, I really feel like this is unfair for all of you. I I just uh, I just think that these agencies need to do better. They need to do better. Uh, Maria Marino, she has a question for Melissa. Uh, Melissa, did East Liverpool Hospital have cameras? <laughs> um, the cops were supposed to check that. I'm not sure. I don't think they ever found anything out. I also tried to get cameras from the bridge. Um, no one would call me back about that. Um, where else, Patina? I forget, honey. Yeah, it, it, we tried to get camera footage from, you know, we even had one person send a video like sent me a video that they thought was him but you couldn't really you couldn't see it well enough to tell if it was him or not walking so so megan you you actually dated uh melissa's yeah. brother yeah um you when i was tell 15 us, uh, tell us tell us about that I, where, where did you guys meet at and I'm just kind of curious. I'm just, it's, it's just kind of uh, interesting. Go ahead. Um, we actually met at the teen club <laughs> and he was my brother's friend. He actually had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he had his white pickup truck back then. Um, but he was one of my brother's friends. They used to go to Yellow Creek together and all that. Um, my mom, my mom did not like that time in her life because uh, I decided I wasn't going home and I went and stayed at Billy's house and she reported me as a runaway. You stayed at, he said you stayed at Billy's house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Melissa doesn't remember this. Maybe, uh, is it Amber? Does Amber remember this? Uh, uh, Melissa's married to Michael, if I'm not mistaken, right? That was my married name. I'm divorced, but. Yeah. Hmm. I do not remember that. I have a horrible memory. <laughs> um, cause we actually stayed in, uh, no, right off, like right down from the bridge. 
Oh, then that would have been my house. I, how do I how do I not remember that? <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, right? um, that's that's crazy. Most you remember out. everything. I do remember everything. Usually. The only way we found out that my mom reported me missing is because my brother actually called Billy and said, "Hey, I know you were at the teen club with my sister last night. Uh, have you seen her?" And as soon as he got the phone, he said, "Look, your mom reported you as a runaway." I was like, are you serious? So he took me back to Liverpool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> who's that? Who's that, Melissa? Is that your uh is that your son? Oh yeah. You can, you can put him on. Hey, how uh, are you? I'm hey. not daughter, <laughs> I'm super son can never find me because uh, I can fight him back. <laughs> <and> I, <laughs> I, <laughs> oh wow. Uh. <laughs> hurt his brother because he's really strong yeah all right <laughs> got everybody I cannot got everybody know. together over there it's beautiful uh, wow well. anthony our our little towns in our area is so small that my daughter used to date billy oh is that right <laughs> yeah <Wow. laughs> boy he must, he, he must. He must be. A, or must have been a good-looking guy, I guess. <laughs> and Michael Leake was had been cutting a trees I'll down, trees down for, me. for for us at my daughter's house. Uh, that's well, how small our area is. Well, that's interesting. I, I live in an area we don't have those. Uh, we don't have too many trees that like that. That's uh, you guys have got some huge trees out your way. Get a lot of rain. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. You know, it, it's a sad story here. I, you know, I, I really hope that we get some answers. I really do. Um. So everybody knows everybody in small town America. It's funny how that works. I hope that going forward, I hope that society gets better and healthier. I, I hope society can be stronger and better. You know, and drugs, hopefully, I don't know if drugs will ever go away. I hope they do. I don't know. I mean, it's just a, such a big problem, sadly. Yes, it is. Uh, I don't know. People just give up hope, I guess, and they turn to drugs. And once they're on them, they're, it's like you just can't, they can't get off of it. Uh, sadly. Sadly. I, oh. um, yeah. Uh, before we end out, uh, I'll let you ladies have the final words. I mean, what do you, we'll start with? I guess we'll begin with Amber. Uh, what are your final words, Amber? Uh, before we end this out, I'll let you ladies have the last word. I just hope and pray that if someone knows something, they say something because this is honestly torture for our family, especially my sister and my mom who are just a mess. So if anybody knows anything, just please say something. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, you know. uh, yeah, I mean, Melissa, you're you're an amazing woman, a, a very strong woman, for uh, for speaking out. And um, boy, it is, it it is uh, sad. It is sad. It is. I uh, can't imagine what it's like to. You know, I live in this house, and it's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> thank god thank you for being with us amber um he's trying to get his five minutes of fame over here <laughs> oh no that's fine that's fine he's always yeah we'll we'll make him famous on this show for sure uh patina what's your what's your final words before we let you go i want to thank you for being here patina uh any final words before we let you leave or before we throw you out of here <laughs> no i'm not trying to be rude but uh i can't your... emphasize enough Please share this out there. Please watch your sides of your rivers, streets. I don't care if, if it, it could be a lookalike. We've had lookalikes. We went, we pulled videos at businesses, double check and making sure it wasn't him or it could have been. The numbers are out there. The flyers are out there. Please keep sharing it. That's the most important for missing people. Keep their stories 
out there until we find Billy and bring him home. I completely agree with that. Keep 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 uh, rattling those cages. Keep keep the story alive, and we will. Uh, Patina, thank you so much for being here. We we greatly appreciate thank you. For you. Having me. Um, yeah, it it is a very uh, a very sad story. It really is. Um, uh, Kayla, what's your final words before we let you go as well? Um, appreciate you being here with us tonight. Um, um, yeah, just to share, I hope we get answers about Michael that way. Uh, we all know my kids, uh, don't, they don't know what to think or what to believe. They hear what people say all the time. So I just want them to know the truth. Very good. Very everybody, good. Everybody deserves the truth. Amen. I completely agree. Uh, Kayla, we, we appreciate you being here with us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. You're, okay. Um, moving along here, but yeah, no, it is a, it's a sad story. It truly is. Truly is. I, um, okay. Well, Patty bounced out. So, um, there's, uh, the two ladies here, Megan, I'm so sorry for you as well. And you look heartbroken and I, I totally get it. I can't even imagine, um, I hope you get closure. I truly do. Um, Me too, because I, you know, I never, I never pictured living my life without my brother, and I, it's, it's horrible. It's like a piece of you that's missing. Yeah. So it's just, I, I just Maybe. hope that you get justice for him sometime. I don't know. You guys live pretty close together. Maybe, maybe going forward, both of you can stay in contact with each other. And sure. Um, <clears throat> it is a it is a heartbreaking story, Megan. Um, what are you, what are your final words before we let you go? And uh, and and uh, you know, I want to thank you again for being here. And and our hearts go out to you. Truly, truly do. I, I got closure when they found him. I just want justice for him. And Melissa, I hope you get closure. Thank you. It, it's not, it's hard knowing the truth, but it's better than not knowing. Because that kid that found him, if he wouldn't have found him, then I'd be in the same situation. Oh, Boy, it is it is heartbreaking, and I'm so sorry that you're going through this. Um, Tyson Chicken Nuggets says, "I will keep praying for all of you." Debbie, Debbie, um, your time. Yeah, and thank you so much for for listening to the story when nobody else would. I think it's important that we hear everybody's story, and, and you know, it's sad that it, it has to be this way, and it's unfortunate. But I do hope that, you know, um, I know you're a strong woman and it's just sad that you're, you know, you, that you have to go on without your brother. But oh my wife is, oh my wife stay is. strong for your kids. Keep yourself clean. Yeah. You're a tough woman. Just keep doing what you're doing. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. You got Melissa now. Hopefully you guys can get together, hang out, do things together. I hope it's moving a small town. It's important to have friends, have a community, have people to do things with, you know, it's important. Right. Um, you're, you're a beautiful woman. You're, you're, you're smart. I know you got a great career. Just keep, keep doing what you're doing and we'll keep talking about this. And hopefully we maybe we'll bring you on again in the future, some kind of an update and see how you're doing. Maybe you can be, you know, an advocate for people dealing with addiction or something or something of that nature, you know, some kind of a group that you can help other people so right. they don't, so they don't become, you know, or find themselves in this situation. Um, I'm sure you can do a lot of good things. Uh, Megan, I thank you so much for being here. Um, you sure. take care. Thank you for having me. Sure enough. You're, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Uh, boy, this is a hard. This is a hard show to do. These are hard stories. And Melissa, we've had you on before. You're a tough girl. <laughs> you're, you're, and I'm, I'm so sorry for 
Still no answers. And what later? <laughs> your your boy there. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> He's you know, but that's the thing that keeps us going is we have to stay strong for the young ones, <laughs> the, for the little ones, the kids. You know, we have to go forward. Even though the, we leave people behind, <laughs> they still have a future. We can't forget that. They still have a future and we have to stay strong, stay positive. <laughs> He's like, can you tell, uh, tell us later? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's laid out your way. I'll, I'll let you go. But Melissa, I, I thank you so much for being here. And um, I appreciate your time. No problem. It's, it was yeah. nice to have you and, and you take care. and. All okay. right. All right, my friends. Uh, there you have it. Another show. Uh, it's a sad story. Drugs is a big problem. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, all the viewers, subscribers, uh, you know, talking about Billy Hart. Um, it's a sad story. You know, this, uh, this family lost a loved one. They don't know if he's alive or, or if he's perished in the river. We don't know. Um, Megan and her brother, Michael Keith Leak Jr. Tragedy lost his life. Um, addiction is a big problem. Drugs are a big problem. I hope the world gets better. I truly do. Hope everyone is doing well. I want to thank all our guests for being on the panel tonight. I want to thank all of you at home, all our subscribers, our newcomers, our members. Um, I had a lot of great comments here. Um, KJ uh, Dickerson says, thanks for giving this family your time, Tony. I No problem at all. We're, we're glad that they were willing to come on and share their stories with us. As heartbreaking and sad as it is. I mean, it, it truly is. Holidays are just up around the corner. Uh, and it's, it's sad. Drugs are a problem. Uh, and these people, whether they have addiction problems or not, they're still, they're still people. They still have loved ones. They have people that love them. They have mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. Some even left behind children. And it's a sad story. It's, it's happening all across America. And it is heartbreaking. It's a tragedy. Um, I want to thank each and every single one of you for being here. Uh, be safe, hug your loved ones. If you have any information on Billy, please, uh, contact the local authorities there in, uh, in East Liverpool, Ohio. Uh, and we'll leave a link for the, uh, description of all that information. It'll be in this video, the des description of this video. We'll have all that there, the links. All right, my friend, I'm the All-American Dream Chaser. Once again, I want to give a thank you to our moderators. Thank you to everybody in the comments, Tyson Chicken Nuggets, KJ Dickerson, Sally Mae, uh, Steve-O. I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, want to, uh, uh, thank you for all the hard work our moderators are doing as well. Um, and all the people that came out of the panel, appreciate all of you. Uh, Megan, thank you for being with us as well. And Melissa for sharing your story about your brothers. And we hope you, we wish you the best. We really do. I hope we can have you on again soon, uh, with an update. And, uh, until then, my friends, we will see you again. I'm the all American dream chaser. You know, how it goes. I always say, Hey, you're something special in this world. We love you. You, you mean the world to somebody and you mean the world to us. And like I always say, don't ever let anybody, anything, or anyone stop you from chasing your dream. All right, my friends. God bless you. Everybody have a wonderful night, and we'll be back again. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and hit that bell button. All right. Bye-bye.